Welcome back to another Python programming video. In this video, we're going to be learning about how to make code more efficient by using controlled loops or count controlled loops. Um, we call them for loops. And we're going to do this uh, for some fun. We're going to actually do this by drawing shapes on the screen using something called Turtle. So to get started, we need to get into Replit and you need to create a new project, but instead of it being a standard Python project, it has to be Python with Turtle. You'll know if you've got it right because you'll have a big white um, canvas somewhere on the screen, uh, which is where we're going to be drawing our pictures. Now, Turtle is a little, um, it goes back a long way, uh, something that has been done for decades in schools for teaching programming. Um, and Python has its own implementation of this thing called Turtle. But to use it, we have to import it. So we're going to type import Turtle. And so that we don't have to type the word Turtle every time, we're going to rename it T. So as T. And let's just show you exactly what Turtle does to start with. So if I do T dot uh, forward 100, and if I run this, you'll see that the turtle, which is this little arrowhead, draws a, it goes forward, drawing a line 100 pixels long. So that's one of the most basic things I can do. I can also go backward if I want to. T dot backward. Notice it doesn't have an S on the end. So I can go backward 100. And it goes back to where it started. Um, and I can change angle as well. So I can go right and left. So let me get rid of the backwards one. And let's go uh, T dot right. Um, 90 degrees and you can see that my turtle has just turned around and it's ready for me to go forwards again so let's go forwards another hundred and uh, you can see we've now uh, got a little bit of a right angle going on here and so you can probably see where this is going but I could now do t dot right again and t dot forward again and t dot right again and t dot forward again and if we run this we should find that we've drawn a square now there's a, a few other commands we can do with turtle which can be really really useful um, including we can set a different color and thickness of our line so if before i even drew my first line if i had done t dot color with the american spelling and then inside brackets as a string, so I need quotes, I can specify the name of a color like red, green, yellow or blue. So if I put red and then ran my code, it would draw a red square. And I can also set the thickness by doing t dot width and a number, an integer, so it doesn't go in quotes, I can set how thick I want it in pixels. So I could do say two pixels wide, so it'd be a bit thicker. Or I could go really wide, I could go like eight pixels wide, and I'd have a very thick line. So for your first task, I want you to start a new Replit session using uh, Python with Turtle as your Replit type. And I want you to write code to draw a rectangle that is 100 pixels wide and 50 pixels high. If you fancy um, just stretching yourself a little bit, then the extension task is to set your turtle to draw lines that are four pixels thick and in blue color. So we've had a go now at drawing uh, squares and rectangles. Let's imagine we wanted to draw a circle though. So a circle, uh, we could do that by starting off with a T. Let's just set our width back to one because I, I changed it before. And let's say we wanted to draw um, a circle by going t dot forward. Now, as well as typing forward, I can actually do a shorthand. I can do FD. So I'm going forward one, t dot right. But actually, again, I can do a shorthand. I can do RT one. And so that's going to go forward one pixel and it's going to turn one degree. And then I can copy that paste that and that will go forward another pixel and write another degree and I can add a lot of these and let's just see what happens and oh it's just gone a very small amount so I could copy and paste that and see if that works any better yeah I'm getting there so I can copy and paste all of that 
that, uh, is that getting closer to a circle? It's starting to draw the arc of a circle. The problem is that I've completely lost track of how many of these I've done. I mean, I can see there's 84 lines in total, so minus the first four lines, that's 80, and it's two lines per thing, so I've got 40 of them here. But the thing is, a circle is gonna need 360. So uh, that's gonna be a lot of copying and pasting. But fortunately, there's a much better way of doing this. So I'm gonna delete all of that that I don't need, and I'm gonna show you how we can actually write two lines of code that are going to repeat 360 times to draw our circle. So remember that we had t forward one and t right one were the kind of basic building blocks of our circle. It's those two lines that we needed to repeat over and over again. So I'm gonna use a for loop. Now last lesson we used while loops and they kept going while a condition was true. A for loop will keep running for a certain number of times. So I'm gonna just write this out for you. It's for and then a variable, doesn't matter what it is, so I'm gonna choose i, but I could have choose I could have chosen x or I could have written steps or anything I like, but I'm gonna do for i in range which is a special built-in function that returns all the numbers between zero and whatever number we put in this bracket. So it means that i is gonna take the value zero, one, two, three, four, all the way up to 360 times every time this loop runs. I need to finish it with a colon, just like we did with if and else and our while loops. And to make these lines run in my for loop, I need to select them and press the tab key so that they are indented inside my for loop. Get rid of that extra space. And this block of code now is saying for i in range 360, we kind of ignore that bit if we want to, let's just pretend it's not there and just imagine we're saying for 360 times, run these two lines of code. So let's see what happens now. And you can see that my circle is going all the way round and by making these two lines of code run 360 times, I actually end up with a complete circle at the end. Now, let's say we wanted to add a little bit more color to this. There are some um, pretty cool built-in functions with Turtle that we can use to do that. So the first one we've already seen is we set the color. So I'm gonna do t.color and I'm gonna make it green. And then I can use um, what's called begin fill and end fill and they're built-in methods which will tell a turtle to start filling in my shapes and stop filling in my shapes so if i do a begin fill then the code to draw the circle and then t end fill it should fill in all the shapes i've drawn in between the begin and the end so let's see if that works so you can see that my turtle is being drawn in green, but we want it filled in. So by the time it's finished drawing it, it should run the end fill line and it should fill in the shapes. And there you go, we've got a filled in green circle. So I've shown you now how you can draw a um, circle using a for loop by making it repeat 360 times. I'd like you as your challenge to write code that uses a for loop as well, but draws a semicircle shape. So basically half a circle. And if you manage that, and again, you wanna push yourself and play with the color a bit more, um, then I'd like you to try and draw a filled in semicircle that's filled in with kind of yellow ink. Um, so for that, you're gonna to have to use the begin fill and end fill commands on your turtle. How did you get on drawing your semicircles? Hopefully you worked out that all you needed to do really was just change the number of repeats from 360 to 180. But as well as drawing circles with for loops, we can draw any regular polygon. So if I wanted to draw a hexagon, that's a six sided shape, I could do code like this. For i in range six, so it runs six times, I could do t dot forward, um, let's go 50, t dot right, and I can just do 360 degrees divided by six. So I could actually work that out, obviously, 
But it's sort of easier to imagine that because we're doing a six-sided shape, it's sort of easier to think, well, my internal angle, or is it my external angle? My external angle needs to be 360 degrees divided by however many sides there are. So let's run that and see what it produces. And there you go, a perfect, regular, six-sided hexagon. So your task now is to write your own code using a for loop to uh, draw a filled in of any color you choose, blue, red, yellow, green, orange, doesn't matter, but a filled in regular octagon, and that's an eight-sided shape. So loops can be really quite fun to play with when it comes to drawing shapes. Anyway, I've given you some code snippets here. There are three of them on the screen, and I'd like you just to take some time just to type each one of those in turn in and see what it produces. The slightly larger one at the bottom needs to start with the words from random import randint, R-A-N-D-I-N-T. This is a special function you can get from Python that produces a randomized number or a random integer between the two numbers that you pass it inside the brackets. And I'm using randint to choose a random color. So instead of um, specifying a color by giving it a name like blue, red, green, I'm giving it a, a color by specifying how much red, green, and blue I want to have in my ink. So it's time now for you to show what you know by drawing your own pattern-based pictures using the turtle and using for loops to make more efficient code. Be creative, don't worry about things not looking great, just try different things out. Try putting for loops inside for loops inside for loops and see what happens. When you've got some designs you're happy with, screenshot them and put them into your worksheet along with the code that you use to produce your patterns.